Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight's guest is Nidhi Mehta, a former Hindu from New Delhi, India, now living in Arizona. You may have heard her story on Rob Rennie's show, The Heirs from New York. Hi, Needy. How are you? Hi, Laura. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. It's it's good to hear your voice. (laughs) Thank you. And tonight you're going to explain some inside information about Hinduism from your own experience. You're going to share the demonic nature of gods, such as Mm -hmm. Shiva the Destroyer and more. So please um, do do start to share, Nidhi. Okay, I will start with my, um, I'll just go back a little bit as I share my testimony today with your listeners. So I'll go back to my childhood times. Um, I was born and brought up in, um, actually it's a sect of Hinduism only, it's called Sikhism. So um, my parents were Sikh, but my grandparents, my grandmother was from a Hindu family, from a hardcore Hindu family. So um, uh, in Sikhism, basically what they do is um, they worship their book. They have a book um, in which all the, you know, mantras and all the important, uh, according to them, all the important information is written. And they have, um, you know, they um, they have big old temples just exactly like Hinduism. So India is basically a country of 300 million gods. Um, it is a country of 27 states. And just in those 27 states, there are millions and millions of gods. And you'll find temples almost at every corner on the roads, you know, people worshipping, praying. So, in, I mean, I, I've, I've honestly felt that people are very religious over there. But again, you know, um, there is a lot of deception and blindness um, that the demons have been successful with over there. Yeah. So I, I grew up, you know, in um, in a Sikh home, and it was an upper middle class family. So, you know, education and um, religion, these were the two very important things in my life. And we were taught to, um, you know, to be very religious people. And you just have to blindly, you know, uh, repeat those prayers whenever you are depressed or sad or there is a problem. So... Um, I just, I grew up having this, you know, this emptiness in me. And for many years, I didn't understand that this emptiness was because I didn't have a have a true relationship with a God. So um, I just used to do whatever my parents said. And as I grew up to be a teenager, you know, I started feeling very depressed. And I, those feelings of depression and anxiety and fear um, began to, you know, take their toll on me. So uh, whenever I used to share with my parents or my mother, um, you know, I I heard that, oh, you are are just like that. You know, you were born this way. So um, we don't have any, any, nothing can help you. I went to temples in Sikhism. I even tried talking to the priests over there in the temples. I still remember I was about um, 17 years old and I was just looking for answers as a young teenager back home and I I stopped the priest in the temple and I said um, um, I, I do everything that you're telling me to do but I'm not feeling uh, the peace I'm not feeling full as a human being and I said I have some questions can you please answer me because whatever I'm reading from these books over the years I felt that I'm not understanding anything I just have to simply read those difficult, you know, Hindi words, but I don't understand. It doesn't speak to me. 
um, the priest over there in that temple just, um, you know, excused himself from, from that place and he just absolutely was, I mean, he maybe he never had somebody ask him any questions like this. So he was kind of confused or, you know, he just left that place and he said, I will talk to you later. And he never came back. I never saw him again. So um, I do remember um, childhood years. I used to look at Bollywood movies, if your listeners are aware about. the um, India is, uh, you know, number two in uh, making movies in the world. It's about 1,000 movies in one year um, that they produce. produce. So I used to watch a, a few movies sometimes growing up, and I used to see a church scene or a picture of, you know, a cross or just the inside of a church, and I started crying one day, you know. Um, uh, I never understood why. And um, now by this time, by 17 years of age, Sikhism was uh, losing its importance in my heart. I used to do it. Now back home, the thing is, I used to live in Hindu uh, belt, where 90% um, in India people are Hindus. So it's more of it is also, you know, um, the thing is, uh, really, you you are dishonoring. You are dishonoring your country. You are dishonoring your parents. You are dishonoring the whole family if you leave your faith. So. Part of my life was I was so scared to ask questions. And honestly telling you, today our youth are back home also are scared to ask questions. We are blindly doing rituals back home, you know, um, but there is no help, honestly. So I was right. I'm talking about that dark phase of my life had just begun. Uh, so, so do you feel... Do you feel needy that, that there are others still there who, for them, these rituals are quite empty and there's just that feeling of... Um, oh, yes, sister. Yeah. Oh, yes. Big time. There are... I, I, I have a burden for Hindus, um, you know, that are back home or wherever they are in the world. I pray to the Lord that they, they are able to see. You know, I think sometimes this, this dark phase is also important. Maybe Lord lets us come to the bottom so that we see, you know, we hit rock bottom and there we find Jesus. So yeah. that was my story. I, I hit rock bottom in my life and that was where I found Jesus. So I agree with you completely. There are, because I, you know, honestly, I feel those are demon gods and the more you pray to them, I mean, you get messed up physically, emotionally, spiritually in all um, you know, walks of life, you get, um, it, it destroys you completely. Because there is a spiritual spiritual power in those things. I'm not saying that it's just a fake or there's no power. There is a power. Yeah. And that power just totally messes you up. Absolutely. I discovered the same because I was a spiritualist. And um, sometimes we prayed oh. to, to the Hindu gods. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Please, please continue. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you know, I was, um, I used to, like, you know, I, I used to have these questions growing up. You know, I used to see, uh, my mother used to uh, wake up at 3 o'clock at times, or I had some neighbors wake up, and there was a big pomp and show about, uh, you know, going to the temple and uh, where they place the book in Sikhism, they place the book um, where it lies and it sleeps. They call the book their god in Sikhism. So they used to take the book on their head and they used to wash the whole area with milk. So that whole temple at 3 o'clock in the night was washed with milk and they would sing praises to their gods, you know, out loud and with all the musical instruments. And whereas there were hungry children outside, you know, on the streets, there were hungry children sleeping or, you know, th those children have never tasted. I used to, I used to wonder, you know, while growing up earlier in childhood days, it was just, um, you know, excite, liberate things in the temple. So it was more of a fun thing for me. But as I grew, I saw that. You know, we are using uh, big um, cans of milk and we are going to wash the place where the book lies the whole day and night. Uh, it's still being done. It's being done every day and night. Uh, you know, before the book goes to, to sleep, 
that area of where the book is lying in the temple in the inside room, uh, that whole area, that room, and the whole passage had to be washed with milk. That is the ritual that is still being done. That book is considered their god. So they pray to the book. And, hello? Hello, yes. Yeah, I was just wondering if I was there. So, so then... Um, I used to wonder growing up that, uh, you know, we are, we are feeding, uh, we are washing the book with milk, but there are hungry children outside the temple. You know, those children have never tasted milk. They used to literally, you know, hold my hand and ask me for food. And with tears in their eyes, or in cold weather, they don't have sweaters on their bodies. But we as Indians, you know, have the audacity to make our temples and our idols of gold, where we have hungry children outside, dying of hunger. They have never tasted milk. But we have the audacity, because religion is so important for us Indians, you know, that we, we need those. I mean, there are many temples in India, as I speak today to you, there are temples that are made of real gold in India. The whole dome, is that is the dome shape, is made of real gold. And you can even do your Google research. And these were the things that started bothering me. You know, I was this, you know, we are, is this serving, is this actually serving God? Are we even serving God when we are doing this, all these rituals? So this, um, you know, this brought a little transition in my mind at that time, but honestly I was very scared to ask, um, you know, anyone because um, I was very young when I asked my dad, um, you know, that I want to go to church because when, I, when we went to a temple and, uh, you know, I was six years old and there was a temple very close by to my home and we used to go there to pray and there was a church right next door and there was a home church somebody had a home church and they were singing praising praises to Jesus so uh, you know something started jumping in my heart and I still remember I said uh, dad can we go inside because I felt something jumping in my heart and um, my parents got very upset with me uh, for asking them to go to church so I think that incident also made me scared to, you know, find out more um, about uh, Lord Jesus, but, but I, I think there was, there was a strong, I think Lord was himself pulling me, basically, that's what I feel. And did but you I also, still didn't, uh -huh. sorry, when you went to that church, was there anything about the people that also attracted you? Did, did you think No, I was, I was not able to go to any church in yeah. India. I didn't go. Yeah, because I was, uh, you know, I was very little when I asked. So after that, I was very scared to ask my my parents about it because, you know, I mean, it's uh, Christians are in minority in India. I think just about one percent um, of population is Christians, and and more of those are in south of India, and I was in um, the northern part of India. So. Um, that is also a reason, you know, it could be, but I just didn't get the courage to um, make my own decision or step out. But uh, this was the time when, you know, I was I was still uh, praying to the Sikh gods, uh, the Sikh gods that they had, so I, I, but this was the time when I started trying Hinduism also, because my grandmother was a Hindu, so she had Hindu idols at home. And uh, many of my dad's friends um, were also Hindus. So a lot of people around me where I started working as a teacher, uh, people were Hindus, many Hindu temples. I mean, it's just, it was, um, you can say, a big, it was easily available, the next thing for me to look for, to fill the, the God-sized hole in me. So this was the time when I was, uh, you know, out of college and I, um, I started looking for answers and trying to fill the gap again. And this was the time when I tried, okay, now Sikhism didn't work, I'm going to try Hinduism. So um, the first thing that I started with Hinduism was there was a Shiva temple near my home. And... Um, I mean, I honestly, I don't know where to start. 
I mean, I, there are no words to explain you. I mean, earlier I was blind and now I see, as the Bible says, you know. So um, I was just blinded to all those idols. It was a very big Shiva temple. And if your, if your viewers can do the research about the Shiva god, um, the Shiva god in Hinduism has a snake wrapped around his neck. And basically you are worshipping snakes when you are worshipping the Shiva God. The Hindu God is also another name is Shivling. Now Linga, L-I-N-G-A. This word basically means the male um, private part. So um, there are different idols of male private parts as to how they look like when they are erected. I apologize if uh, this is way too much, um, you know, um, not appropriate. No, okay. But okay, but that is the actual idol, yeah. uh, shivling. It is called shivling, and um, the word is linga. Linga means uh, the male uh, part, and once it's erected, um, that is how they make the idol. And the ritual is that if you wash uh, the idol with milk, with pure mi milk, the milk that is not boiled, then uh, doing this will bring positive energy to your home. Um, now, I did not do this uh, for positive energy, honestly. I'll tell you, Shiva is also responsible um, according to Hindus, he is um, called the god of um, providing you with the best husband. So by this time, um, I was engaged three times. And all the three times, um, my um, engagement broke right before the wedding ceremony. So um, by this time, you know, I was, um, I was a young girl and I, my parents started, uh, you know, feeling that, oh, it's time for you to get married. And again, it's uh, more religion is more uh, you know strong. So we gotta find a Hindu boy for you, or you know, um, if you like a boy, he has to be a Hindu boy. So with the same um, you know cast, yeah. we are in. So it's, they it's were quite looking interesting. at. It's interesting you uh, sharing all this. Um, what's that? I, I just said that it's quite interesting what you're sharing. Please continue. Okay, so um, by this time, um, three times, you know, I was engaged and um, just right before the wedding, um, things would mess up. I mean, everything gets settled and uh, my, there was excitement. Oh, Nidhi is going to get married and, you know, the pictures are clicked and um, you get the jewelry and dresses ready and stuff is ready and suddenly, you know, um, something happens. And uh, that was the time when I was, I got really depressed and um, in India, if your daughter is not getting married, um, the, it's on parents. So your parents take it very personally that, oh, three times this has happened. We don't know what's going on with this girl. So, you know, they would discuss stuff in front of you, and you tend to get depressed as to, oh, maybe there's something wrong with me. So I used to be very depressed, and I used to go to six temples, and I just used to cry. And um, once a friend at work told me that you should go to this Shiva God temple that's close to your house. And um, there is a ritual of keeping a fast for 16 Mondays. And for 16 Mondays, um, um, the day Monday, I mean, uh, if you don't eat the whole day and you just eat once a day, the Shiva God will be very happy with you. And he is going to send a very, very loving husband your way. So, I mean, I was, I was desperate for my parents to not be upset with me. I was, I was working, I was an independent girl, but I just wanted to see my parents happy. If my marriage is going to make it and I'm going to do this. And I felt that maybe this is going to make me less depressed. Maybe Shiva is the God, you know. And um, I, I just left Sikhism at that time. I, I, I thought I'm going to try this God. But I, little did I know that I was putting myself into very big trouble. 
um, you know what happens is the enemy won't let you know when you start. He, he's gonna he's gonna keep you in that prison cell and he's gonna keep you so comfortable. But he's gonna make you pay pay the price later. So that is what happened with me. You know, I um, 16 Mondays. I mean, I don't know how many Mondays I fasted for a husband. Um, and I used to, now the fast ritual is early morning, you get up on a Monday morning, um, you take shower and you go to the temple right away with a big bowl of milk and you go and wash the shivling. The shivling is what I explained, it's black in color. And then there is a tree. I mean, there are so many rituals. Um, I mean, I just there can be a book written on the dead rituals of Indian gods, honestly. And we can still not have all the rituals in that book. That is the amount of rituals that I'm talking about gods. I am just sharing one god out of the three million gods, and I'm just sharing one ritual that I was a part of. And this this Shiva god, this Shiva god is the the one that's is it Ganesha that looks like a elephant? Yes, Ganesha is the son, according to the Hindu mythology, Ganesha is the son of Shiva and Parvati. Shiva, according to them, stays he's living in heaven according to them, and he has a wife called Parvati that and their son is half human and half elephant. And yeah. his name is Ganesha. It sounds, um, I remember when I was a spiritualist, um, I remember being interested in it. And at the same time, I must admit, I was also a bit disgusted because the gods did look kind of grotesque. Um, and I find it ironic that, um, you know, they, they would have said that these bring positive energies into your home and yet of course Shiva is also the god of destruction so it's, it's kind yes. of ir ironic isn't it? True, I agree with you and and you know the, the, the main thing is you know that I mean I, I honestly feel that uh, we don't see these things until Lord allows us to see yeah. you know until until he, he takes that big veil off of our eyes because at that time, I feel my I was blinded. I mean, I would do anything for that depression and sadness, anxiety to go away. Yeah. And I was just trying to look for, okay, maybe I'll wash this idol, you know, with milk. Maybe then I'll feel the peace. You know, maybe I'll, I'll and there is a specific plant, the leaves of that plant. You have to cover that idol with the leaves of that plant. And Monday morning you do that. You don't eat anything the whole day. You just drink water. By evening you just have some fruit. This is how you are making your God happy. Whereas the Bible says when you fast, don't tell anybody. Just pray to the Lord. I mean just the concept of fasting. There is a big contrast in Hinduism and if you want to call Christianity a religion. You know, uh, such a big difference when you read the Bible. You know, about I just compare. I mean, I was amazed when I see when I saw that, because I've been fasting in Hinduism, and we tell everybody that we are fasting in Hinduism. So by the evening you have the fruit, and for 16 Mondays you do this. On the 16th Monday, you go to the temple again, and the priest gives you a list of things, a list of about 27 items that you have to buy from the store. And you have to present to the priest to make the Shiva God happy. So every 16th Monday, I used to uh, go to the store. I used to buy the list of 27 things that the priest told me. He's, he was called the Guru or Pandit. And he said that we are going to do a ritual now that your fast is over. We are going, we are going to tell Shiva God that your fast is over. And uh, so that he can receive um, all these gifts for the fast. So I used to do this. And in the evening, I, at the 16th Monday evening, I would go. I had to wear white, as explained by the priest. And uh, he, 
he did the ritual. Uh, we used to sit on the floor and he used to do the ritual with some fire. He used to put fire in a little vessel and put all the things that I brought, the 27 things. And he said, even if one is missing, he's going to be mad. So you've got to be careful. You've got to bring all the 16, 27 things. And I took everything to the temple and I honestly, I have no clue how many 16 Mondays fast I did. And I feel that, you know, that was another open door in my life. I mean, I, I my situation became worse by the day. When you say open door, you mean another open door to uh, evil spirits, really? I, I mean that an open door for evil spirits to enter me, and I think it's, I mean, the snakes. I honestly feel that that was an open door for all those snakes. I mean, uh, there are people who will, on Mondays in India, they will take milk and they will feed the snakes. They will feed those snakes. I mean, and idolize them because they actually feel that the spirit of Shiva has come into the snake and is now coming to talk to them. So that is called Naga Panchami. That is one of the holy days that is celebrated in India once a year. It is called Naga Panchami. Naga in, in Hindu language means snake in Sanskrit. So they celebrate that day and uh, that day is for snakes. I remember when, I, yeah, when, I, when I came to, to Jesus, Nidi, I had a deliverance Christians cast demons out of me and um, mm -hmm. obviously at the time I didn't fully understand it but, but looking back yeah. now it, it interests me because when they cast out the the Indian and the, the Hindu gods from me they actually did shake my body like a snake you know they, they, cast, wow. the, they cast yoga because I did yoga and meditation and when they cast yes. those demons out, my, my body reacted like a snake. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. which is, is rather surprising. And to pick up what you said there, I totally agree with you. Um, the difference mm -hmm. in, in fasting. Um, fasting for Christians, um, I would say Christianity is not a religion. It's about a relationship with Jesus. Amen. And having Amen. that relationship with Jesus that that um, otherwise there is an emptiness and when we, when we fast um, it increases our relationship with Jesus we're not doing it to appease him or make him happy um, it actually because it's a spiritual practice it brings us closer to Jesus and we feel his presence more we hear his voice clearer we're just yes. more saturated in his love and of course it's good for spiritual warfare, the fasting, to cast out demons and so on. So yeah, total, yes. total contrast. I agree with you. Mm. Please, please continue. Sure. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, and uh, on that note, thank you for sharing. I would like to add a little bit, although I'll share more with your uh, listeners about yoga. Only this morning it happened, uh, you know, um, I know yoga is demonic. And there was a picture on, you know, I was just scrolling through my phone uh, about pictures, yoga pictures, and there was a picture where the, the lady was wearing a black, you know, yoga pants and a black tight shirt. And she was actually, you know, stretching her front part of the body with the ground. And, you know, Lord, let me see that she was looking like a snake. And I was like, I was amazed when I saw that this morning. I was like, wow, I've never seen it with this perspective, Lord. I never thought. And Lord said, she's actually how a snake, you know, half of the body is with the ground. And the, and the front half, the latter part is with the ground. And the front half is, you know, held up a little bit in the air. So that is how she was stretching. So we think it is just normal stretching, but we are opening portals, you know, uh, yeah. when we are doing. I'll share more later, but I just, um, you know, thought of share, share, sharing this with uh, you today because I was just, I've never seen that 
uh, in the picture this way. I mean, uh, you know, how the Lord has shown me. So it's just his, his glory that he's letting me see these things now. That's amazing. Do, do you mean that um, you saw it in the spiritual sense where the Lord showed yes. you, you? You actually saw the serpent demon, you know, on her? Yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Cause yes. Sometimes yes. When, I, when I look at people, I can see, you know, the demon that's in them and it may be the form of a snake or, or whatever. So I see what you mean. That's, yes. Um, yeah, the discernment of spirits uh -huh. is, is a wonderful gift. Pra praise God. Yeah, yeah, and you know, I mean, you, I mean, people, you know, my own family, you know, they they think that I'm crazy, or I just honestly say that you've got to experience this. Until you experience this, you won't believe, you know, that these things exist. I mean, yeah, you know, Jesus doesn't come to have coffee with you every morning. I mean, he's not that tangible, but but he does exist. Demons are there in the spiritual realm, and Jesus is the living God, you know. So, I mean, yeah, scientists won't believe it because we don't see them. Until Lord lets you see them, you know. So, so you did meditation and yoga yourself? Yeah, I I was just you know like I was I started going deep into Hinduism now. By this time, I was um, into deep into Hinduism, so I I started. And my parents were okay with it. You know, you'll see the contrast now that when I moved from Sikhism to Hinduism, there was no problem. This was my transition from Sikhism to Hinduism, and there was absolutely no problem. Uh, with my family. My parents encouraged me, even uh, they would help me with my fast, you know, uh, and stuff in Hinduism when I was uh, going to the Shiva temple. And that is how I found out more about Ganesha and about, you know, why we should pray to Ganesha because Ganesha is the god of money. But I was more inclined towards Shiva and I used to there are there were other idols in the same temple, but I prayed to Shiva too much. Um, and from here, um, from praying to Shiva, I, I moved into I, I did uh, try Buddhism for some time, but I, I stuck with uh, yoga and meditation. So now, as I I was into yoga and meditation very strong by this time, I was into Hinduism just having idols at my home, I started bringing idols in my home and I felt that I was doing, um, you know, uh, I was doing what I was supposed to do. So now Sikhism was not helping me, so I'm doing Hinduism and all my family is supporting me. And um, I, I went into very deep yoga and meditation. I mean, every day I used to meditate and I could actually feel the powers around me. I mean, I used to just close my eyes and I felt those powers around me. Um, between did you have my eyes, some supernatural, you had some supernatural experiences with that then, with those, those powers? Oh, uh, uh, my supernatural experience, um, <clears throat> I think um, not very... Um, the way that I could see those things, but I could, uh, more of it was I could feel them, feel you know, them, I could, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to explain it to your listeners, but, but it was like, you know, I could feel a rush of energy between my eyes, you know, where we have our eyebrows on my forehead. I mean, that third eye opening, it is so tangible um, that, I mean, I could actually feel uh, those things entering through my third eye from my head and entry. I think Lord didn't allow me to see them. Maybe some people are able to see that they are demons, but till now I'm doing yoga, I'm doing meditation. Um, I used to do it day and night, but Lord, um, I think he allowed um, as much as I could see. I could feel them. I could feel them coming in me. Um, you know, the moment I sat, I, you know, we open our legs and how we sit, you know, like in a crisscross position and we make a, when we do yoga, we make a, a hand symbol. Um, it's a very peculiar hand symbol that you make with your hands um, is of six, 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 the symbol that you make when you, when people begin to do yoga or start, sit down for meditation and they chant the mantra Om. 
I remember so, doing that myself. Uh, yeah, I remember doing that. Oh, oh. Yeah, I did that. Mm -hmm. and it's um, like you say, it's really interesting because um, although that is yoga and meditation, you know, linked mm -hmm. with Hinduism, the interesting thing is others do that too and also describe that feeling of the energy uh, entering mm -hmm. them and the energy rushing through them. And um, mm -hmm. I just find it interesting with the, the similarity there with the, the third eye opening because, of course, Luciferians and those who believe mm -hmm. that Lu Lucifer, Satan is God, they um, believe in opening the third eye and raising their conscience levels and their mm -hmm. vibrations yeah. and all this, you know, reaching this cosmic unity with nature and people. And so you can see that this teaching is really quite widespread in other uh, belief systems too. And yet those other ones will readily admit the power is coming from Lucifer. So you can see why we keep going back to this where we say these false gods are actually demons. Mm -hmm. They are. They are actually demon gods, you know. And, um, and you know, the thing is that the Bible is so deep I mean, it explains you everything, and I mean, I think it's the most scientific book, our Bible, and it does it does explain um, that you know these are demon gods, and and there are so many of them, and they have they have so many hands in those idols. You will see they have I mean just one human type figure with an elephant uh, with the trunk of an elephant. And it would have ten hands on the back. So in different hands, it has different things. On this note, I would also like to share with your listeners that they, in their books and in their mantras, they even say that, pray to me and I will give you money, I will give you power, I will give you luxuries of life. Those gods, people do all those rituals for money. And they do get money also. But on the other hand, our Bible says, that you will, you may have to lose everything if you follow me. Jesus told his, asked his disciples, "Have you counted the cost to follow me? Because you'll have to lose everything." So, so that's that's the biggest contrast for me. That um, you know, hello. Yes, I'm still here. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Especially for for people who um, are in certain religions where coming to Jesus does mean losing family and, and friends, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, but as we know, Jesus gives us back so much more, we have eternal life, yes. we have salvation, Praise God. Yes. We, we, we have his presence, he becomes our everything to us, uh, far, far closer than any deity we ever, we ever yes. spoke to. He he changes. Amen. He changes your life completely. You are not the old uh, Laura now. I'm not the old Nidhi. And your listeners, um, I would like to talk to every Hindu in the world, and I would tell them that you will not be the same Hindu. You will not be looking for peace anymore. He will come and stay inside you forever. He'll give you a new life that you won't believe i mean his bible says i will give you peace beyond all understanding this was the peace i was looking for and this was the peace i found in christ amen amen, amen. please please so, continue uh-huh so i i was uh, you know i was um, into yoga and meditation and this was the point, you know, in 2007 when I was deep into yoga and meditation, I was growing depressed by the day. I was becoming very depressed. But as I shared, you know, my uh, even Hindu temples were losing their charm, you can say. Um, and I could actually feel now um, to be, the powers were very strong inside me, the, around me also and inside me also. So I could actually feel these powers now. Yeah. But I used to just ignore. I thought maybe there's something wrong with my mind. If I, I, I'm only I'm able to hear these things, I mean, what is this going on? The more I do yoga, the more I should be peaceful. After all this meditation for an hour, the result should be that I should be peaceful. But on the other hand, the result was that I was more, um, you know, depressed. 
Now, I'm talking about the time now that I've been married for uh, two years. Finally, you know, uh, maybe my, my, my belief system in Shiva God in, increased a little bit, honestly, and I, I felt him working. Uh, my marriage materialized. My husband um, is a very, very nice person, so I thought maybe praying to Shiva God, he has sent a nice person in my life, and everything seemed, um, you know, uh, really good. So I continued with Shiva thinking that, oh, praying to him really honestly works, so why not keep on doing him, keep on doing more yoga, so it is, it is going to help me more. I was doing, um, you know, um, on my own only yoga, and uh, there are CDs available in India back home, or you can just, um, uh, just chant the mantra Om over and over again. Yeah. And I was amazed to see in the Bible it says, do not repeat um, the prayers as heathens do. And that is so true. I mean, in the Bible, it, it completely is the book of truth. It says that the pagans repeat their prayers. And that is very true. Hinduism, they repeat their prayers over and over again, thinking that their continuous repetition, the gods will hear. Yeah, that, that is, is exactly. True. Exactly. It, you know, it reminds me a bit of Catholicism as well, or sometimes even some Christians who just repeat the Lord's Prayer repetitiously. Uh -huh. And um, that's uh -huh. not a relationship. When we talk to each other, when we talk to our friends or our family, we just talk to them. We don't <laughs> we don't speak uh -huh. to our parents yeah. in, in riddles and, and repetitions. It's about relationship, isn't it? And, yeah. Um, yeah, totally. And I agree with you. I've heard so many people say that in the beginning, mm -hmm. yoga and meditation, they did find a peace from it at first. But of course, it was a deceptive peace because once they were drawn into it at a deep level, they discovered they were getting more spirits entering them and more, as you say, just um, ending mm -hmm. up ending up going the wrong way rather than being a good thing, they discovered it was a negative thing. And I remember mm -hmm. when I was a, a spiritualist, we were taught uh, that the yogis themselves even warned about yoga. They even warned about the Kundalini rising and they warned about not doing too much yoga. So there you have it, even the yogis themselves would say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, they will say that it's uh, the Kundalini rising, if it doesn't rise properly, you know, it's wrong for you. Um, but they still glorify, you know. I mean, I agree with you, yeah, they themselves know the dangers that come with it, and that is exactly what happened, you know. Um, I, I think I got the Kundalini demon. Yeah. And this is the most horrible experience of my life, you know. I, I, it was just horrible. I mean, like you asked me, you know, if I had any supernatural experience, uh, this reminds me um, that by this time, I, uh, you know, after doing a lot of yoga and meditation, I did not actually see them, but I felt like, Lord, let me see in my spirit. So this uh, demon, you know, after doing meditation, like, you know, after just finishing the meditation, that it was very close to me in the spiritual realm to my own uh, to my own self and it was saying it was half frog and a half it was like a standing frog yeah. and it had a, it had a very ugly you know body um, and it had a little black shawl, black stole over it or a shawl and it said that won't you do it more won't you enjoying it and I was like, I was just um, shocked when I felt this feeling because I was like, what's going on with me after doing all this? Why am I experiencing things like that? I mean, that spirit literally, and I didn't know that these were demons. I had no clue that yeah. demons existed. It's interesting. Because, I mean, Nidhi, so, sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> no, it's um, okay. It's just, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to... Um, Say, say things and, and, and listen to you at the same time. Uh, sorry, I just get excited <laughs> because... I'm yeah, me too. I get excited and I don't let my, you know, uh, friends talk when it comes to Jesus. So I got to be also quiet. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's because as well, a lot of the things you, you're sharing are bringing back memories to me. And I remember... Um, my mother and I did yoga and meditation, and when we mm -hmm. were 
trying to leave that lifestyle, we were trying to leave spiritualism, we began to get attacked by the spirits who had mm. pretended to be our, our spirit guides and our gods. Those spirits attacked us, but I do remember my mother being attacked by a huge black frog. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, and that was when she was trying to stop doing the yoga and stop doing the meditation and the black mm -hmm. frog and those demons would um, persuade her to do it even though she didn't want to do it. They would try and force her into the yoga yeah, and yeah. force her to do mm -hmm. the meditation even though she didn't want to do it. They would take her into trance. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting, that uh, similarity there with that, mm -hmm. that frog type demon. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, it was, it was very, very scary and creepy and and, you know, first it said, um, you know, in a nicer way, won't you continue doing it? And when I, I was like, you know, okay, I'll try, I'll not do it. If, if this is, you know, uh, what is this going on? Maybe my brain is getting messed up with this too much because I didn't know these were demons. So I just thought I'll stop it. And when you stop, they get angry. Yeah. That is the problem because now you have stopped doing it. So they yeah. get mad at you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Absolutely. And I know of I know of a woman who used to be a medium, a spiritualist medium. She came to Jesus a few years ago, and she um, told me she she knew when she did the meditation that the spirits would enter her, and um, wow. she tried to stop it, and they got angry at her. And not only did they get angry at her, they commanded her to go and start. A meditation group in her house and to invite people to her house for meditation because the spirits wanted to jump into people into as many people as they could and um, mm -hmm. so she felt pressured by them and she began a meditation group and of course those people who went there wouldn't wouldn't assume that spirits were about to jump into them they, they obviously would think meditation is a good thing they wouldn't realize it's mm -hmm. actually actually demonic Mm -hmm. It is. It is pure demonic. It'll open you up and it will mess you up physically, emotionally, spiritually, in all aspects. It is. It does. It's. It's horrible. I mean, I, I honestly, I don't have a word for it. I've. I've lived it. You know. I've. I've gone through it. You have gone through it. You know. And I just wish I could stop Hindus from this, but. You know, all I can do is try share my testimony and um, maybe when they hear it. Uh, definitely. You know, you know, it's definitely a powerful testimony. And I think as well, it's one thing people sometimes hear Christians say, oh, those false gods are demons. And people may think, oh, that's, that's nonsense. But if we've experienced that, we know how it felt to have those powers and those energies rushing in our bodies. We also know how it mm -hmm. felt when we came became a Christian and those demons were cast out of our bodies, we, we felt that yes. pres presence literally leave. We felt those energies mm -hmm. rush out and acting like demons, they obviously they screamed and so on when they came out. So, you mm -hmm. know, we actually have evidence for our claims. It's not just uh, theory that we're, we're saying mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And, you know, uh, the, the main thing is, you know, I will share with your listeners eventually also, the whole concept of deliverance from demons. I mean, it just excites me. It amazes me. I mean, it is so tangible that you will actually feel the snake move in your stomach, then rise up, come out of your eyes and your mouth and yawning. I mean, it's so tangible. And you'll see the freedom. You'll see the fruit of it. Lord said, in my name, they shall cast out demons. Those shall believe. You just need to believe. You don't have to um, be a part of rituals. You don't have to do Sunday, uh, Monday is fast. You know, you don't have to have a list of 27 items to break the fast. No, you just have to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And then you have the authority to command those dirty snakes out of your stomach and you can feel them leave your body. Isn't that amazing, people? I mean, it just amazes me. I get excited. What else is amazing, you know, more amazing than this? That you command it out of your body, out of your mind, and it has to go. It has to abide. 
by that by that direction, by the order that you are giving. Where is this freedom? In which religion do we have this freedom that we command things and they go? Amen. No. Amen. As I agree with you, it's so exciting, and yeah, I've I've felt the, felt the, the demons leave tangibly, and as you say, the, the fruit of it is changes in your life. You feel different, physically different, emotionally different, mm -hmm. spiritually mm. cle clearer. And you know, I remember um, having deliverance of um, to do with meditation, and um, I used to suffer migraine headaches. And of course, oh. the spiritualists would say, well, that's just a, a, an ascension symptom. That's just because you're evolving in your consciousness, your vibrations are rising. But ascension mm -hmm. symptom, you know, no, it was a demonic ailment. And um, okay. when those demons were cast out me, the, those migraines stopped. So glory to God, Jesus. Um, Pray God. Wants us to be free from all of these things and, and to walk in health and freedom. Amen. Then, you know, I, I feel I've actually started living my life after I came to Jesus. Honestly, I, I mean, earlier it was just breathing. You had lungs, you had a windpipe, you're just breathing, you're just living your life. But after coming in Christ, I feel, you know, it's, it's you know, actual. One second. Sorry, sorry. That's okay, your little girl, she sounds lovely. And um, I, I agree <laughs> okay, with you, I, I agree with you, um, I felt that too. When I came to Jesus, I felt like, in a sense, my life had just begun. It, it was like someone had just turned the light switch on and suddenly I could see the world in a whole new light. And um, I remember um, leading a friend to, to Christ and she went home and the very next day she phoned me and wanted to see me straight away and, and she came round to my house and she said, Laura, I feel as if I've been born again. So I started mm -hmm. laughing and I said to her, well, that's because you have been born again. That's how the Bible describes it. But it was interesting. She felt that in a tangible way and she was using that um, language even though she didn't know she had become born again. So I found that interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. a new life. Mm -hmm. So it is It is actually a new life, you know, you can, it's not just in the Bible, it is not just on paper and pencil, or it is not just words, it is actually a life that you will, your life will be changed, you will be a new person, you know, I mean, I, I didn't know all this until I got saved, and you know, I mean, it's, it's just, I'm still learning, he's still delivering me, I'm still learning, but but I, I just tell, I said, Lord, I've never, never felt like I was living till I found you or you found me, you know. <laughs> he loved us first. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's just, I feel many Hindus are, or many people who are in this new age spiritualism are missing out on so much. They are, they are just blinded and they, they don't know these demons may give them peace for some time. Some nice things, you know, will happen in your life. Um, it is all this, these things he's going to feed you so that he can keep you in that cell. But I'm telling you people, he's going he's gonna to make you pay the price in the end. And that is what happened with me. You know, I had to pay the price for all that yoga and meditation. And that was the time when I was shocked and I was amazed as to what's going on. Why is my life going down the hill? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm doing... Uh, what the the priest is telling me to do, I'm doing everything right. If he's telling me to wake up at three o'clock, I'm awake at three o'clock. I'm doing every ritual the correct way. I'm washing the idols with milk. Why? Yeah. Why are still this way for me? You know. Yeah. But by this time, you know, I had um, I got an opportunity to work here in uh, United States. So I came here, um, it was the year 2007, and this was the time I was still doing yoga and meditation, but I was horribly depressed. I was, I had anxiety problems, I was depressed, and I, I had no idea how to, um, you know, fix these things. I brought all the little idols in my purse. <laughs> I still remember on the airport I made sure that 
I had the idols in my suitcase, you know, when I was packing my stuff to come here to work here. And I think that was Lord's plan, um, you know, because um, I didn't have the courage to go to any church. There were no Christians around me back home. So I think this was the uh, plan of the Lord to pull me, pull me out, pulling me out of Egypt, as you can say, from the Bible. So um, I came here in 2007, and um, in, the, in the plane, I, I came here with um, 20 people who came to work here, and one of them was Christian, one of my friends. So um, I just uh, came to know that she was Christian. We just came to know each other in the airplane. And I just, uh, there was so much, I mean, joy and excitement in my heart just to know that she was a Christian and I could talk to her about the Bible and nobody will get mad at me anymore because I was in the airplane. Yeah. <laughs> I was not in India, so I will, I, I will not make my family mad or anything. So all those, that bondage of fear was not there in the airplane. So I was just bubbling with joy and I went and talked to her and I said, um, Priya, can uh, can you t tell me more about the Bible? Because um, because I'm just hungry for the Lord. I really want. I always wanted to know about Jesus, but uh, again, I I couldn't uh, find the courage. And I found the courage that day, and I went to her, and she just got very excited, and she said, "Yes, I can share more about Jesus." So we talked a little bit in the airplane, and then when we came here to Arizona, he uh, she took me to her church um, after three days of me coming here. So I, I, I was a born-again <laughs> Christian. I received the Lord. I, I, uh, the, the pastor said that who wants to give their life to the Lord, and I came forward. Um, but um, uh, the thing was that, uh, you know, I, I, I gave my life to Christ. I used to read the Bible, but um, I backslid about three times. I will share with you as to how I first came to the Lord was, um, again, I was depressed. I was still doing my yoga and meditation. I, I felt that all these things are a way to God. Oh, you know, it's, nothing was shining a lot about, um, you know, like, oh, Jesus is the only way. But, but a seed was sown in my heart. At least I could go to the church and I could pray. So I was, I was again very depressed um, at my home, and I was just um, going, going through the different YouTube uh, things on computer. And suddenly this prayer came up on the computer, and I just clicked on it. By this time, I was having some very difficult relationships with my uh, relationship problems with my husband. My daughter was about four years old when I five years old when I came here. So I had some argument with my husband because of my depression was growing so strong, my anxiety and depression was so strong. I was okay at my workplace, you know, I could I could handle that. But as soon as as I came home, you know, those those spirits would never leave you alone because they're gonna they're gonna manifest in your in your mind in your body if you continue doing all those things. And I had no idea that these were demons. So I used to feel very depressed and. You know, my, I did this prayer. My husband had gone, taken my daughter outside uh, to the park, and I was just uh, crying. No reason. I just used to cry. I used to feel like I should, I mean, something is just, you know, uh, choking my neck. That is how I used to feel. And I um, said this prayer. You know, I was in my tears, and it said that, okay, do you want to receive Jesus into your heart right now? Um, in the YouTube prayer, and I just did that three-minute prayer, and I felt something came upon me right at that moment. And honestly telling you, listeners, my life in those three minutes, after those three minutes, my life completely changed. The grass was greener. I could feel a supernatural experience. There was something that happened to me, and I felt lighter. I felt joyful. I even went outside, and I tried to see what was, I mean, what is, what is the change? What has just happened to me just now? This is the tangibility I'm talking about. So I went outside, and I could see the grass shine more. I mean, in my depression, I never felt 
that I should appreciate what God created for us, for us human beings, you know, the greenery, the clouds, the rainbow, and I felt everything was more colorful. I had never felt this, you know, ever in my life I was depressed. I feel like I was depressed since I was born, honestly telling you. So I had never experienced this, and my husband came back, and I was just smiling, and I was, I had no clue what had happened to me. What had happened to me was I got the baptism of the Holy Spirit at that time. I I went to churches in Arizona, honestly telling you, but I mean, I, I used to be a regular, I used to go regularly to the churches, but what happens is when you become a believer, I honestly, this is my opinion, I could be wrong, you know, but um, I feel when a newborn Christian, a person becomes a newborn Christian or receives Jesus, they should come to know the power of deliverance from demons and spiritual warfare the same day. There should be somebody to explain them what to expect from now on. Because you're a child of God in the spiritual realm, you are a threat. Yeah, I, you I, are I, a threat agree. to the enemy. I totally agree with you, Nidhi. And we're actually about to run out of time. Um, okay. but, but yes, I agree with you. And when I got born again, I saw the grass greener and the trees more beautiful. I had that experience too, which I'd never experienced before in all my searching in other spiritualities. It was definitely like Jesus just turned a light on inside me and I literally mm. saw things differently. Amen. Um, and also I experienced the demons choking my neck. Like you say, mm. are those demons that, mm-hmm. that um, pretend to be like snakes. And I think a lot of listeners have experienced that, where the demons have tried to choke them or strangle them. And um, mm-hmm. it's worth saying that at the name of Jesus Christ, these demons mm-hmm. will, will leave. And yeah, spiritual warfare okay. um, is so important. But as we're running out mm-hmm. of time, we definitely will, will have to continue with part two another time. Okay. It would be wonderful, okay. wonderful to have you back. And meantime, if, if anyone wants to uh, listen to your testimony on YouTube, Rob Rennie of New York has a channel called Eternal Planner, and you will find Needy's testimony on there. That's Rob Rennie, Eternal Planner, YouTube. And if you want to contact Needy, she is on Facebook under the name of Walking Miracles. If you mm-hmm. are a friend of mine on Facebook, you could probably type that in and you'll find her in my list of friends, Walking Miracles. So, Nidhi, um, it would be lovely if you could now pray for listeners, pray for those who may be practicing Hinduism or yoga, meditation. Mm-hmm. Just just pray what, what the Holy Spirit wants you to pray. Amen. Okay. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank you, Laura, for letting me share my testimony so deeply, for letting me come on your show. And um, I would pray for your listeners. Um, Listeners, I hold my hands with you and let's um, go and talk to the Lord right now in prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I I hold my hands with all the believers as we on this radio show um, and with Sister Laura. Lord, we thank you that you made this radio show possible, that it will be able to share the truth that you and only you are the living God, Lord, that no other God, Heavenly Father, is the living God, Father. Father, I ask for um, for remission of sins of um, innocent blood on India, Heavenly Father, on the land of India, Father. Father, I ask for all the curses on that land to be broken, Father, because of the idol worship, Father, that they have broken the commandment of worshipping idols, putting gold, real gold, on their temples, Father. I ask for standing in the gap. Lord, right now I do this intercessory prayer for all my Hindu brothers and sisters, Lord. All the people who are and night at the right time, thinking that if they do things this way or that way, the gods will be happy, Father. But you said in the Bible that we don't have to do anything, Father, just to just to be saved, Father. You said, believe and you shall be saved. 
receive me, ask and you shall find it, seek and it shall be open to you, Father. Father, that we receive, that we, by your blood, Heavenly Father, there is no need for child sacrifice, Heavenly Father. There is no need for sacrifices to be made in those Muslim temples or uh, Hindu temples, Lord. There is no need for blood to be shed, Lord, that your blood on the cross was shed for the whole humanity, Father. Father, that the spirit of blindness and deception over India, over those temples, I agree with my believers in Christ right now and we bind that evil spirit of deception and blindness on those temples and there will be no back no backlash i command you to be bound and stay bound in jesus name every hindu family has the spirit of deception and blindness all the people who are doing yoga, they are blinded. I bind their yoga spirits and spirits of deception and blindness. All mind control spirits, I bind you. And I command you to stay bound until people see the truth and cast you out in Jesus' name. I lose the angels of peace over those people. Heavenly Father, you are the Prince of Peace. You said, I give you the peace that bypasses all understanding. Father, the Bible is true. You gave me the peace that bypasses all understanding. You changed me in one minute, Lord, Heavenly Father. I thank you for my testimony. I thank you for Laura's testimony. I thank you for many Hindus who will come out of this testimony, Lord, that we will sing honor and praises to you, Father. Father, I ask for special financial blessings on uh, Laura's ministry, Lord, that she will be able to touch people, Heavenly Father. Their hearts will be touched, Lord. And you will bless her ministry financially, Father, because we know all these things I need money also, Lord. I lose the heavenly currency in her uh, in her radio show right now that the angels will be losing, pouring the heavenly currency. Those gold coins will be poured in her ministry, Lord. Any listeners who are going through any financial trouble, Lord, I lose, I lose the heavenly coins in their purses right now in Jesus' name. Lord, you said by the word, by the word of Heavenly Father, everything happened, Heavenly Father. When in Genesis, by the word, you created everything. We have the same spirit that is, was in Genesis, Lord. By the word, we will create everything, Lord. I command all diseases in people's body, all depression will go and they will be able to see the truth in Jesus' name. I thank you for Laura's family. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you that I was able to talk today. I was able to speak today, Heavenly Father. I thank you for my children, my marriage, Father, that you changed my life. You turned my life around from being suicidal to being joyful, Lord. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father. All glory to you, Abba, Father. Amen. Thank you, Nidhi, for that beautiful and powerful prayer. Dear listeners, if you want to ask Jesus to become your Saviour and God, Nidhi would now love to pray with you and say the salvation prayer for you. So please repeat this prayer along with her. Yes, thank you, Laura, for letting me do the honour. Thank you. Um, my dear um, listeners, my friends, uh, my brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have reached that point of rock bottom, if you are there right now, then Jesus is waiting for you. He wants to come into your heart and change your life forever. I was there once where you are today and you're listening to this program and I hold my hands with you and let's go and knock at the doors of heaven and let's ask for the Holy Spirit to touch us right now. Um, repeat after me, uh, my friends, I've always said this prayer whenever I um, hit rock bottom in my life, and Jesus always showed up. So uh, say with me, my friends, um, Lord Jesus, I come before you just as I am. I am sorry for my sins. I repent for my sins. Please forgive me. In your name, I forgive all others for what they have done against me. I renounce Satan, the evil spirits, and all their works. Please come in. If Jesus, please become my Lord, my God. And I receive you right now in my heart, Jesus. I agree that you died on the cross for my sins, Lord, and I make you my Savior, Lord. 
and I'm redeemed by your blood, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, I receive you right now. Congratulations, my friends. You have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I congratulate you on your new life today. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Nidhi. And yes, listeners, um, you won't regret asking Jesus into your life. He will never leave you nor forsake you, and it's a brand new life with him. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for, for taking part in this program and, and sharing your story with us all. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for letting me, Laura. I was honoured in Jesus' name. It was such a pleasure, and your story really glorifies God. Thank you again, and bye-bye. Bye, Laura. Bye-bye. <laughs> Eternal Radio. The preceding program was made possible by kind donations from the listeners to Eternal Radio, for which we are very grateful.